Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the final video of my cross gantry secret printer uh, prototype thing. Um, I finally had time to get this actually printing and I learned a lot from this printer. Uh, it's time to close this project down and kind of put it away. Uh, if I do end up making a cross country printer similar to this, uh, it probably won't be till next year. I just have too many projects on the go, designs, things like that, that I want to work on. And I'm just trying to get all the projects that I've had in the back burner kind of closed out so I can just start focusing on individual projects um, instead of like having four or five of them on go. So I learned a lot. Um, going forward, uh, I think this design would be pretty cool and I think it does make a lot of sense. However, in scaling it up and actually making it print even faster, I would make some changes to the frame. Uh, the 2020 extrusions here, how they mount to the uh, halo plates, I guess, if you call them that, not the best. Uh, there needs to be a better way to actually mount these to the um, plates to provide a bit more rigidity. They're not a very rigid mounting solution, um, coupling this 2020 with this uh, plate. But again, with this size and, and uh, kind of Voron V0-esque speeds, it's perfectly fine. But if I was scaling this up to a 180 by 180 uh, bed, which is the idea, I would want to design a better uh, kind of base for these plates to actually attach to. Everything about the motion system, very happy with. Uh, one big thing that this prototype proved was these uh, shafts here, which transfer the motor power from the bottom up into the actual XY gantry themselves, worked great. I had no issues with them. And I would like to incorporate something like this on maybe some future printers. It's just nice being able to mount the motors uh, maybe down below on your build and actually transfer the motion up. There's some benefits to packaging, which that does solve. So that's quite nice. Um, I really, really learned a lot with like polishing the look of this printer. I think it's one of my better looking printers. It has kind of like a unique theme to it and it does have some polish to it that generally I don't do on a lot of my printers. I, I generally like hard edges. I don't fill it a lot of things and whatnot because I want them to just print really nice. Um, but this one, I took a little bit more time and I filleted some things and kind of polished some things up a little bit more and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out aesthetically. It does look quite nice. Uh, I will show you around the printer kind of one final look in its form and then I will show you printing. Uh, I will show this printer printing a, a model out. I kind of just threw this thing together as far as like wiring, of course, that's usually my excuse for this type of stuff, but you know, typical spaghetti wiring for me. Um, again, as I talked about before, the Z axis on this printer was just what I could fit with these plates and make work. Uh, dual motor belted Z, uh, wouldn't carry forward to the 180. Like I said, I would be doing a triple Z uh, belted Z with an actual probe. There's no probe on here. I just have two end stops uh, mounted down below. The bare minimum basically to get this thing printing was the idea because I wanted to see if the motion system would actually work. I didn't really care too much about the Z or anything like that. Uh, I just wanted to see the printer work see it print, see the print quality, that type of thing. So this prototype proved itself. I'm happy with it. Um, I will revisit maybe something like this next year. Uh, I still have like two or three printers that I want to finish up this year. Uh, as some of you might know, if you're watching the live streams or you're following the channel, I am building Simple Core Redux. Uh, so that is my focus right now. Uh, Delta Flyer refit 
is complete. Uh, LDO is getting those kits prepared and ready to go. So that's another project that I was able to complete as well. And then uh, I have two new printer designs that I want to start working on. Again, one at a time, but I need to get rid of the backlog of just stuff like this sitting around collecting dust. Um, I have a rook behind me that I would like to rebuild with some fun sore metal parts that I've had for like a year. Uh, just clean up a lot of little things. So um, I am going to put this on printables. Uh, do I recommend that you build it? No. Um, probably for about 90% of you. This is a prototype as much as a prototype can be. Uh, the cooling is barely adequate on it. Um, it does print. It's very rough around the edges. Uh, there's some things that aren't completed like the door and stuff like that. There's no way to enclose the top of this right now. You would have to build a, a top hat type thing, which I never really like. Um, it's in a rough state. It prints, but it's in a rough state. I'm putting the files and everything on printables, obviously, because I want to give uh, all of you the opportunity to grab the CAD, maybe inspire you, make printers from based on this, modify this. Maybe you want to just see how it works, mess around with it. Some of you might want to build this. That's completely fine as well. I think for most people, uh, they'd skip this version. And potentially if I came out with like a 180 by 180 version of this, uh, that would be uh, something to build. Uh, like I say, I'm, I'm very happy with how these like halo plates worked. Um, I think that it aligns everything really, really well. All my um, linear rails, the motion was nice and smooth. There was no binding or anything like that. And I think this coupled with a better 2020 uh, frame solution could be a really, really cool rigid printer for not a lot of money. But uh, yeah, that's kind of overview on the closure of this project. I'll before we hop over to taking a look at this printer up close and seeing it print, I'd really like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Until September 30th, PCBWay is offering purple solder mask at no extra cost. Purple is one of my favorite colors other than green, of course. So definitely check that out and order some PCBs before the end of the month. PCB Way doesn't just do PCBs. They do CNC machining, 3D printing, they do flexible and rigid PCBs. Let's go ahead and try out some 3D printing here. Let's take one of the files from Delta Flyer. This is the bamboo hot end mount for Delta Flyer. Let's add a quantity of one. We're gonna choose ABS. And of course, let's set this to green and choose 40% infill. You can see here we have our price on the right hand side and we can go ahead and order that 3D printed part. If you need PCBs, CNC machining or 3D printing, definitely check out PCB Way in the link in the description below. All right, so um, really quick overview here of the printer. I, I know I've shown this off in the past so we won't go through it too much but uh, you can kind of see the finished off tool head here. Just really, really basic. Um, I just have a Delta 2510 fan here with a bamboo hot end. This is Bowden, just ultra simplicity. And then it mounts to these two uh, linear rails here. I'm pretty happy with the, the, the tool head. There's no cooling on the tool head. There's just no room on this form factor. Um, this could be done better. I know Mitsubishi has like a much better design for a tool head, which um, I think would be a better fit for this printer. But overall, I'm really happy with how the gantry, everything came together. The tensioning with the apex clips worked really well. All of the belt path is nice and clean and straight. I, I really do love this over Core XY. It just simplifies the belt path. Um, the downside of course is tons of linear rails, lots of bearings, lots of idlers, all this kind of stuff. Um, everything on this printer is genuine gates. So gates, idlers, gates, pulleys, gates, belts to make sure everything was nice and straight and clean. Uh, for the Z, like I said, 
I just added an end stop for each motor, just hot glued them down there because there was no real provisions for that in the plates. I just went with a belted Z, um, pretty straightforward. However, it did work quite well. We can see our carbon shafts here with the motors attached. Uh, had no issues with these, uh, seemed to print very, very well. No artifacts or anything from this that I can see. So very happy with that. And that was the big thing why I wanted to build this printer was to try this out. Um, again, I tapped these 2020s here. This is not a very rigid solution and this most likely should be a boxed frame and then this would bolt on top or something to that effect. I'm still going to figure that out. Um, I like the halo plate idea. It ke keeps things very precise and it, it, it kind of has a really cool look to it. It's very unique and I'm a big fan of the, the look of the printer. Um, I was going to use the boombox uh, boat and extruder, but I kind of stole it from my simple core project. So I just had this Fetus Apus uh, version one extruder. It is not ideal for Bowden. It's a direct drive extruder running Bowden. It has a crazy high gear ratio. It's not fast enough for direct drive. So again, I wasn't really caring about the extrusion on this printer. I wasn't trying to prove that. I was just trying to get it printing and I had this extruder lying around for like over a year and I never even used it. So I just threw it on there really quick. Nothing special back here except some Rolohan wiring. I'm just running a Big Tree Tech Pi 2 and a Monster MKS uh, board there that I had. And uh, yeah, you can see my haphazard uh, cooling solution in the back. If any of you OG members remember the original Rook, uh, this is slightly better than that, but we just have a giant 120 millimeter fan in the back. And I do have a duct here just blowing directly onto the print area. The cooling's all right. Uh, ideally, you would want to have some ducts on the slide. So what I eventually, or what I was planning on doing was I was going to split the cooling to the sides and then have the cooling blow in, which would be massively better, but that would have taken me too long. I just wanted to get this printing. I just wanted to get this project done because again, at the end of the day, this printer is done. I'm never going to touch this again um, because I'm building a completely, like a bigger version if I do next year. All of this is going away. <laughs> so it doesn't matter make sense for me to spend a bunch of time making cooling ducts and all this kind of stuff just to prove the motion system. So uh, as far as prints, I printed a kind of large Cali dragon here in gray, of course, because it shows the detail the best. Um, you can see the overhang cooling like this is obviously printed like this. So all the cooling is at the back of this, but you can see how clean the layers are on here. Uh, the motion of this printer proved itself and that was what was most important. Um, but obviously a lot more cooling needs to be done, uh, a lot more tuning needs to be done and a proper extruder should be used if I want this to, to be better. Again, here's a Benchy. We have issues with the extrusion of course, but everything else looks good. Pressure advance can't keep up there, um, <laughs> nor can the cooling, but like I say, uh, very happy with the motion. Um, and I will show you that printer uh, printing right now. And here we are printing. Um, you can see there's definite cooling issues there on the front. Obviously, we're just getting cool air from the back. Um, and it's got that old school sound because we're running 16 micro steps, not 32, to quiet the motors down. So you can kind of hear the motors. Uh, there, some people definitely like the sound of that, but uh, yeah, I'll let this run for a little bit. You guys can watch it print. 